All right, it should be recording. Let me see here. Does anybody see if it's recording? There it is. Okay, perfect. Let me share again. Sorry. Hey, Chris, didn't see use this all these Kathy. controls. Oh, hi, Kathy. We're just getting started. I was just getting it set up to record. So welcome, everybody. Okay. Um, this is our 2020 orientation call for our, our genetics pop-ups. Um, and I'm so glad that you are all, all were able to make it today. Thank you so much for uh, taking a little time out of your day to jump on. And thank you also for applying to do a pop-up and, and being a recipient of a pop-up for um, Mountain States. So I'm just going to go over a couple slides to begin with. Um, I would love to start with introductions. Um, if everybody wouldn't mind, I'm just doing a round robin um, introductions of a real short who you are and where and when you are popping up with genetics um, in, in the mountain states. So I have a map that I made um, that I'm gonna pop up here and we can actually use that as a kind of a roll call list. These dots represent all the pop-ups for our region. Um, we're, we have slated about 17 pop-ups um, planned. And so um, not everybody was able to make the call today. That's why we're recording it. So we're just going to go down the list, if that's okay. We'll start with Arizona. Um, Kathy, do you mind introducing yourself? Hi, this is Kathy Lewandowski. I'm with the Office for Children with Special Health Journeys at the Department of Health Services. Our pop-up is this Saturday from 10 to 2. It's at a Latino learning community event where our families um, and their children are uh, deaf or hard of hearing and uh, Spanish-speaking, English-speaking, and a uh, sign. So um, we're looking forward to it. It's, um, we hope to have about 80 to 100 people at this event. That's awesome, Kathy. And Kathy is officially our first 2020 pop-up. So her box is already in the mail and already arrived. Right, Kathy? <laughs> yes. Thank Good. you. <laughs> Good. Okay. And next, um, Becky, I don't think was able to make the call. Is anybody, um, is, is Becky on or anyone from um, the Genetic Counseling Program? I think they were busy with clinic today. Anyone on? Okay, we'll skip over them and, and check in at the end. Melinda, I think you said you were on. Mindy? Yes. Um, hello, uh, my name is Mindy Burnworth, and I am the Arizona ambassador for the Rare Action Network, which is part of the National Organization for Rare Disorders. And we are having our genetic pop-up at our Rare Disease Day event, which we're holding on the rarest day of the year, Saturday, February 29th, please here. And we're going to have that at the Children's Museum in Tucson. And we're, we're excited to um, be able to provide this as a, a first-year offering, but hopefully a recurring um, event. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So exciting. All right. And from Colorado, I think we have Maria on the line. Maria, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. I'm Maria Castillo, and I'm doing a, a couple pop-ups in Colorado along with my son, Jesus. He's not available right now. And one of, the first one will be, and I'm meeting with uh, Elisa from Grupo Vida tomorrow to talk about details. Uh, about the pop up that has been scheduled for February 8th, and that will be like a noon time. Um, and uh, the second one will be with developmental pathways. Uh, the ladies who's running that group is Sylvia, and that one is scheduled on the 12th, which is on a Wednesday, and that's going to be in the morning. She also has another topic along with my, with my presentation, but that's the day that she usually runs the group so she actually add my topic and the same because her group runs for like a three hours which i was kind of like wow wow i think they had sumba a little bit before and they had the kids coming in and then they had the topic and she said usually the the topics that she presented usually three hours so wow. she actually was able to accommodate my or topic at uh, the beginning i think she told me so Great. we in contact we talking about it and then they know about what we uh, we provide in lunch and everything. So I think she she told me in the beginning there can be twelve uh, to fifteen people, but I had the feeling that it's gonna be more than that. Uh, yeah. I was maybe twenty uh, because okay. she's inviting coordinators from the developmental pathways, 
Right. And same with a uh, uh, group of Vida. I spoke with Ba, who also is in charge of the group, along with Sylvia, another person. And he told me, I spoke with him yesterday, and he told me the probably will be around, uh, he thinks it's probably about 25 people. Okay. Along with kids, I believe, so. Okay, so the one at 20 and the, the other one at 25, at group of Vida. Mm -hmm. okay. So that will be February 8th and a Saturday, and then February 12th on a Wednesday, which is the week after. Week after. You're going to have two in one week. Wow. Yes. Those are going to be busy. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be busy. But the lady wasn't able, and the night thing was the, the one on development, development of pathways, but there was some conflict with the schedule, so they asked her to change the day, so I had yeah. to kind of accommodate. No worry. Thank you so much. So I for think setting. we should be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for setting those up. Those are going to be awesome. And yeah. Brittany's also in Colorado. Um, Brittany, could um, you uh, let us know about what your pop-up's going to look like and, and introduce yourself? Sure. So um, my name is Brittany Park and I live um, just outside of Denver. Um, and I am um, a mother to a son who has a rare disorder. Um, so Grayson was born um, almost 10 months ago, and he was diagnosed with Cabalmine G, which is a really rare form of Cabalmine disorder. Um, and so um, we are holding a pop-up at Children's Hospital um, here in Denver in one of their conference rooms. Um, and our goal is to kind of bring together other families who've been recently diagnosed within the last couple of years, um, having different rare disorders. I think we're going to focus more on younger children who have organic acidemias. Um, so they have similar disorders. Our children will have similar disorders. Um, and we're going to be doing this pop-up on the Saturday, February 29th. So on rare disease day um, in the morning. So we're uh, excited. We're excited too. Thank you so much. And Heather, I think, is on from Colorado. Heather, do you want to uh, introduce yourself and let us know about your pop-up, which I know is, is still in the final, <laughs> final planning stages? Yes. Hi. So my name is Heather Schichtel. I'm the executive director of Miracles for Mido here in Colorado. Um, we are shooting to have our pop-up um, the week of March 9th. Um, it's still kind of a a day in flux. Um, I received a, tra a travel stipend to go, actually, we were planning to have this on Rare Disease Week, but I will be in D.C. Um, lobbying for um, meeting with our Congress people for that week. Um, I received a travel stipend, so very excited about that, but it did move my pop-up. Um, so we're hoping for that week of March 9th, um, would like to do something in collaboration with Colorado Rare. Um, we have good friends who are with the Grin Network and along with CDKL5. Um, these are all really strong advocates in our state and so we'd like to bring them together to talk to our families about what works with advocacy, what is needed, and um, how best to navigate um, the rare genetics world. World, um, from kind of a, a group of, of seasoned veterans, I think, in this space. So um, stay tuned. We're hoping to have between 20 and 30 people. We're doing this in the evening. Um, and that's kind of where we are right now. Perfect. And we'll, we'll be sure to get the details out whenever, whenever that's fine. When, when I have them. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Keep, keep working, keep working towards it. All right. And I think Jamie's on as well from Colorado. I think we have the whole Colorado bunch. Jamie, are you on? Can you introduce yourself? Yes. Yes. And so tell us I'm Jamie and I am holding a pop-up in Lafayette, Colorado at Flatirons Community Church on May 3rd. Um, and I'm also an ABM Neuro Movement practitioner, so I'm doing it as a combined event. And this morning, I just received word that I won't have to do two separate events. Oh, yay! <laughs> that I got the um, large facility because I'm also planning on doing a um, screening, a free screening of the film, um, A Life Unbound, and combining it with a resource fair and um, a free ABM Neuro Movement um, clinic for Q&A sessions, such thing. It's still, everything's still very early in the planning <laughs> stages, obviously, since I just received um, word about the availability to um, have the bigger space. Um, but that's great so, that you're gonna be able to have the resource fair too. That'll be awesome. Yes, 
Yep. Great. So you're planning so, to pop yep. up at that event, right? <laughs> yes. Yep, exactly. So as far as the number of people, I don't know. I don't know yet. That's <laughs> okay. a lot. Be a surprise. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Jamie. And Jen Bana is on. Uh, Jen, can you introduce yourself um, and tell us about your Montana pop-up? Yes. Hi, this is Jen Bana, and I'm mom to a 19-year-old with a neurodevelopmental disability. And I'm going to be doing a genetic pop-up at our Circle of Parents, which is a family part group in Missoula that is for all parents, but also focuses on parents who have kids with special health care needs. And I'm hoping to, after I do it there, to maybe take it on the road and do it at some of the other meetings that they have across our state. Awesome. And when's your pop-up? Oh, sorry, 12th? February 12th. 12th, yeah. I'm starting to get them all memorized. <laughs> all right, awesome. And from Nevada, I think we have Hannah on. Hannah, are you still on? I'm still here. And I know you guys are in the planning stages, so just tell us what you know. Amy texted me and said she could not be on today. Oh, okay. Um, I think I saw Amy's last email. Oh, sorry. Hi, guys. My name is Hannah Barnhart, and I will be doing a pop-up um, here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and I'm doing it with Amy Holly or Amy Price, I think. <laughs> I can never remember her last name. Um, and we just actually recently met on online through email. So, um, and we're doing it, I think we decided on a date, which is March 13th, which is Friday the 13th. Um, <laughs> and uh, we, I've, I'm currently still in contact with uh, a church friend of mine um she has a local business here um and it's been running for 20 years and sh she has two daughters that have um cf which is cystic fibrosis and um they actually have been uh such an inspiration to her that sh they are they were the ones that inspired her to start this business and kind of be um, a person that people can talk to about cystic fibrosis. So um, hopefully I can get a hold of her so that we can get her venue and um, go from there. So again, starting awesome. it with that, but that's as far as I know. That's okay. And they're actually going to do this two weeks after another big event that's in um, Las Vegas, um, which is called... Um, uh, it will, which will be held on Rare Disease Day, which is from the Little Miss Hannah Foundation, is having a rare on the run um, 5K. And so the idea yes. they have is to, to invite people from that event to come to this event kind of as an after event, two weeks after the Rare Disease Day event for, people, for families to connect and um, have the genetics pop up. So, yes. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. And then Mary Meeker. Mary, are you on the call? I don't know if she's on. I don't think Mary's on. Okay, so Mary's having one in Reno, Nevada, and Mary was actually um, slated to have one last spring, and um, unfortunately, due to some scheduling and things, she had to reschedule. So she, she's going to be rescheduling along with all of us, which is really exciting because because there'll be two in Nevada, north and south will be covered in Nevada there. All right, so for New Mexico, um, I think um, did Elvira join us or um, Kyle? I think you were on. Would you would you be able to talk at all about what you guys are planning? Hi, yes. uh, is this jo Josie? Oh, Josie came to. Hi, Josie. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know you were on. Kyle, can, <laughs> can I can I just start off and then pass it to Kyle? Sure, go ahead. Introduce yourself. Kyle is, hi, yeah, hi. Uh, this is. Josie, um, I'm a program administrator of Navajo Family Voices. Um, our pop-up is going to be on March 13th uh, at the San Juan Public Health Office during the gastroenterology clinic, uh, where they have a lot of uh, uh, Navajo babies on feeding tubes. Uh, it will be a mixed group, a uh, very multicultural group. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it's going to be in conjunction with the clinic. Uh, they're expecting 11 families. Uh, Hi. And Kyle, Kyle will be making. Uh, hello. Oh, hi, Jesus. Hang on. Let Let's let Josie finish, and then I'll, you can introduce yourself. Go ahead. Uh, hi, hi, Jesus. Uh, so, uh, so Kyle will be uh, cooking. Uh, uh, 
a sort of like a validation meal for, for the families and a pop up will happen then. Uh, so we haven't figured out the exact meal yet. Um, but uh, we're all going to be there. We'll be a, a full networking with the families, a full validation and the pop up. So Kyle? tell us what, tell us, Kyle yeah. or, or Josie, tell us what a validation meal means. Well, uh, I... these, are, these are struggling families. Uh, uh, so uh, it will be like a celebration of them, a validation, and uh, 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 introducing Napo Family Voices to them as well uh, as a, a resource for them to to uh, and basically uh, CMS Children's Medical Services is telling us it will be so wonderful to validate them too through some kind of celebration, especially with food. Awesome. Great. Thank you for sharing. And Kyle, did you want to, did you want to add on and introduce yourself? Yes, sure. Um, yate, everybody. Uh, my name is Kyle. I'm from the Four Corners community. And so uh, part of what we're doing is also cultural sensitivity is included. Um, given uh, myself, I am part of the Diné tribe. And so much of the families that we are working with also um, have a conflict with the environment that we work on, including the power generating stations, the uranium mines, and so forth. And so part of the food that we'll be, we will be serving is also plant-based. And so we are sharing the message to grow our food networks and, no, and allowing people to be aware that food is medicine as well. Thank you. Wonderful. We're glad you're here. Thanks for joining us, Kyle. It sounds like an awesome event. So excited, exciting to, to hear about that. So from Texas, I don't know if um, Elysian is on. Elysian, are you there? Yes, I'm on. Good afternoon. Go ahead. Yes, so I'm Elysian Thomas. We were blessed to uh, be a part of the first uh, genetics pop-up last year, but we're going to have it at our same time in late April. Um, at our empowerment conference and what we do, we help individuals with sickle cell disease. So we're going to probably do it around the same event. Um, we'll probably have a, a minimum of 80 to about 125 in which we will let them know about the wonderful material in the genetics box. So we're excited. Awesome. And, and Alicia and Ann Kathy, who went first, um, are, um, and Jamie, who's on here as well, um, we're all uh, and, and Maria and Jesus, we have lots of um, veterans on, on this call, meaning that they participated in our pilot project with the pop-ups, which was last um, spring and spring of 2019. And so, and when we get to the Q&A period, I'm going to let um, some of them answer some of your questions because they've been there, done that. So, all right, so let's go ahead and see. I think Gina was texted me that she was not able to be on. Gina, were you able to make it? I don't think so. Okay. And then for Wyoming, um, Melody is, did Melody, were, were you able to make it Melody? If you're, if, if you're talking, we are on mute. I, I don't see your name popping up. Okay. And then Kenneth, Kenneth, are you on the line? Okay. All right, we'll, we'll go ahead to the next slide. And if they join later, we'll let them introduce themselves at the end. But, um, Great. Thank you guys for all introducing yourselves. I hope this was helpful. I, I love making connections between uh, advocates and genetic ambassadors in our state. So I hope this was helpful just kind of hearing what everybody else is doing. And I think sometimes that gives us ideas for other things we can do in our own community. So I hope that was helpful. And if you want to connect with anyone one on one um, or want to learn more about a pop up, just feel free to send me an email and I'm happy to connect you all. So um, this is just a general slide. By this point, you guys already know what a genetic pop-up is, but I've included this to kind of start the conversation of what our vision was when we first started this program last year. So our idea was a genetics pop-up would be a small five to eight person gathering held in um, a local, the local community, spearheaded by our genetic ambassadors. And the real purpose was to share genetic resources with families and those who work with families impacted by genetic conditions. And um, as you can hear by the introductions of everybody today, um, the word small <laughs> ha 
has different meetings, right? And, and some of these pop-ups have become quite large, which is totally fine by us. But um, I've, I've told a lot of you that, that our intention and, and our, our, our hope in this is that none of these pop-ups are overwhelming to whoever is putting them on. So, so a small, small five-day eight people versus 50 to 80 people is really what the genetic ambassador's comfort level is and what, what they, feel, they feel like they can do in their community. So there's no pressure on bigger numbers, and we just appreciate everybody participating and doing, doing what they feel comfortable with. So I've divided this presentation up into a couple of, of kind of stages before the pop-up, during the pop-up, after the pop-up. So we'll go, I'm gonna go over the before the pop-up because that's the phase we're in right now. Um, you all have applied, you've been awarded your pop-up, and right now we are working on advertising. So um, I am busy making flyers for every um, public event. So if you remember back to your application, there was a question on there if you if the event was private or public. And then the second question was, did you want Mountain States to help you advertise that? Um, so if you said yes to both those questions, then I am working right now on making a flyer for you. There's a couple examples up here. Jen Bonna has already has hers for Circle of Parents. I made uh, melodies up for Wyoming. Um, and then if you want, if it's not a private event and you are okay, are you okay with us putting it on social media, what I am doing is I'm creating a Facebook event on our Facebook page. This is an example of one um, down here. Oops. I went to the next slide. Um, and then um, the flyers are for you to, to distribute and, and use however you see fit in, in your community, wherever you want to post those. If you want to post them on your own Facebook page and things, those I have those in JPEG and PDF format that I can send those to you. So um, I'm working on those right now. If, if you have a question about whether um, a flyer is coming or in the works with you, just shoot me an email and I can, I, I'm going based on how you, um, answered the survey so um that's those are the ones i'm working on first but if you feel like hey i would really like a flyer even though mine's a private event i'd really like to send this to the people that i'm inviting or send it to them as a reminder these are these are pretty easy to make up and i have a template for them so i'm happy to do that for you the other place we're advertising and getting the word out um is on two um two uh, websites that are for rare disease day so we have um I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to mute. Wait, a little bit of background noise. So if you're not on mute, you're in a noisy environment, could you put yourself on mute? I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, okay. So, uh, all right. So we have rarediseaseday.org, and that's the National Rare Disease Day um, organization um, that covers the entire world. You can see this map here um, of all of these different countries that are participating. And then the U.S. Um, participant for this, uh, or U.S. Um, affiliate for, the, for, for Rare Disease Day things going on in the United States is NORD, and their website is raredisease.org rarediseases.org and they have a place where you can put events as well so if your event again is public and um you wanted advertising i'm working on adding your event to these pages so that they can be seen by a wider audience the other thing that um, i just submitted for last night was be to become a friend of rare disease day for mountain states and so i just got confirmation that we've been advertising as well and i have a link to our pop-up there as well so those are the things we're doing beforehand. Um, and the other thing we're doing is Annette is helping us um, pack the in the boxes up from our THI office in Austin, Texas. And those should be on their way shortly. Um, and so I just wanted to give some highlights of some of the things that are in the box and show you where you can find um, some things as well. So um, let's see here. Um, this is um, on the four families tab of our website. Um, and the four families tab has um, a drop down, and you can go to genetics pop ups. And underneath there, it says gene in a box resource kit. kit. And when you click on that, um, that will take you to a list of all of our gene in the box resources. So I'm going to um, stop sharing my slide here, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up my other. Um, browser and share that. Let's see, hopefully I can do that. 
um, share. All right, this is just a screenshot. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, this is uh, our gene in a box um, listing on our website. So everything that's going to be in your box is actually also hyperlinked on our website. And I have to thank Kathy Lewandowski for this idea because she said it would be so helpful to have a list and have those available for other things that she goes to. And so I created this list based on what was um, in our box last year. And if you scroll down, we have new resources for 2020 added at the bottom there. But just a couple things that I wanted to highlight for you. So when you get your box, you can kind of understand what's in there. Um, there's a couple different categories of resources. We have Mountain States resources, which include our magnets and brochures. There should be enough packed in there for um, every attendee of your event to, ha to have at least one magnet and one brochure. That's, that's our goal. Um, if you have more show up to your, your event than you anticipated for, we're, we're going by the amount that you anticipated. So if you say you're going to have 30 people, we'll put in 30 magnets and 30 brochures um, in English or Spanish based on, based on what you've told us um, your attendees will be. So um, those are in there. And then I wanted to highlight the developmental delay algorithm. I'm going to switch um, tabs here because um, this is a resource that Mountain States has developed and um, this can be really helpful, um, not necessarily for you to sit there and read this to people at your pop up, but just to have it on hand if you have a family who has a child who's um, uh, uh, struggling with a developmental delay and maybe they're not sure about having a conversation about genetics um, with their doctor, there's some information here that you can give them um, to, to take to their doctor, to take to their pediatrician about developmental delay and genetics. The next category of things that are in the box um, are from Genetic Alliance. Um, there are some um, of these orange and green booklets. Um, we are on limited quantities of these, so um, hopefully we'll have enough to make sure everybody gets one of those. And then there's also down here a genetic counseling, a book about genetic counseling that's no longer available in print, but we are printing a copy um, to put in the box. So those are some of the Genetic Alliance um, resources. Um, then we have um, a lot of um, NIH um, uh, free, free resources. Um, one, some of the things that are included in there are some uh, actual school curriculum. And um, there's even a rare disease curriculum um, for high schools, um, for grades, or sorry, middle schools, so grades six through eight. So as we have some of these available um, in print, we're, we're including those in the boxes. Again, we're kind of on limited quantity. That, that's why I've included the link here. All of these are available as PDF downloads on the NIH site. The other cool thing that NIH had and we were able to get some copies of is this, this magazine called Findings. Um, and it's... Um, a medical science magazine from the NIH, and this is just an example of one, um, but it's, it's um, aimed at um, high school students, but it's got a lot of really neat science and, and some genetic articles in it. Um, we also have some uh, information in there from the American Academy of Pediatrics. A while back, they did something that was called Genetics and Primary Care Institute, um, and it was to really to help pediatricians understand genetics. And this um, infographic is really helpful, I think, for pediatricians. So this will be included in there. It shows the roles of a primary care provider um, or a pediatrician um, in, with, with a uh, patient with, that might have a genetic condition. Um, we also have this for, um, this is printed out. Um, this is also from the American Academy of Pediatrics, but what is a pediatric geneticist? It's a really easy to understand um, guide for families on what, what type of doctor is a pediatric geneticist. And then we also included something um, from the NIH as well um, from, that's called GARD. And this one is really cool. I think this is a, like a, a hidden gem that not many people know about. GARD stands for Genetic and Rare Diseases Information Center. And this is actually a hotline number that um, families can call, professionals can call, really anyone can call it. It is manned by, manned and womaned by um, genetic counselors who answer the phone and who are available to answer questions about over 6,500 rare diseases. Now they can't give medical advice. They're not there to diagnose anybody with a rare disease, but they are there if you have, if you know somebody who has a diagnosis that is very rare and they need to find some information about it or they have questions about it um, or they wanna find a specific support 
support group for it, this um, organization can do that with, with a real live person. So um, this is really uh, helpful. And we have this flyer or a similar flyer also available in Spanish as well. And they also have Spanish speaking individuals who can answer the, those um, parents' questions. Um, let's see, this one is um, from the American Society of Human Genetics. It's a rare disease info sheet that we've added this year. And um, we've also added the Rare Disease Day poster. So this is the official Rare Disease Day poster um, for um, February 29th. So that's in your box as well. And then this is the NORDS rare disease infographic, which has some really, really, I think, surprising to most people uh, statistics about rare disease. Um, this one still always shocks me that almost one in 10 uh, people in America will have a rare disease um, and that many of those are, are pediatric. So that's included as well. So um, the um, one other thing for that's new for 2020 is um, we have um, uh, been in talks with the CDC with their Learn the Signs Act Early program. This kind of ties in really um, well with our developmental delay algorithm because this is how um, some tools for parents to know whether their child is delayed or not in their developmental milestones. So we've ordered some of these materials and those are in the box and we have them in English and Spanish as well. Um, but this links to the site where there's many, many more um, resources available for families, including these checklists for um, two months to five years. Um, so that can be helpful for families too. Thanks. All right. So that, I think that took me through all my tabs there. So I'm going to go back um, and back to my presentation. Let's see, back to sharing that. And I'll just pause for a moment. Um, does anyone have any questions so far of, of any of that information? Um, as I mentioned, it's kind of in different categories. These are kind of the big categories that I talked about um, based, on, based on partners. But does anybody have a question on any of the resources before I, before I go on? And yes, I still have a question about um, the title for the Spanish speaking. So I'm meeting with Alicia tomorrow to see if we can come up with something, but that's, that's a hard one. <laughs> it is a hard one. You know what I was thinking for you, uh, Maria, what about looking at some of the names of the resources that are in Spanish and seeing how they, how they title them? Yeah. You think yeah, that would be helpful? I, yeah. I, I was looking at the, the, when you put the, the, the flyer that they say the Montana State Regional Genetic, Genetic Pop Pop. Um, I think that's what we talk about it. So like I said, um, yeah, I think that's a good idea to go, to go and check uh, if it's something that it fits the name. And I will check with Elisa tomorrow because I talked to Bob also about that. So okay. yes, because the father is going to be asking about what does that mean? I mean, I'm pretty sure genetics, is, um, they can understand that. But the pop-up thing is something that I'm. If, still... if you can't find the word a, a word translation for pop-up, I would just drop the pop-up and just just do genetics. I okay. think that would be the easiest. So, okay, okay. all right. So the, a couple things I've already highlighted for 2020 that we've added to the box, but I just wanted to show you a couple couple other things. So we've added this National Geographic magazine. There's one copy of this in every. Um, Gene in a box. Um, I don't know if many people saw this, but this came out on the newsstands um, this uh, late summer, early fall. And this was a special edition all about your genes, a user's guide, 100 things you never knew. So it's a really user-friendly, um, written in nice layman's terms, beautiful pictures, as National Geographic is known to do, um, that is really, really nice just to have available for people to look through. So that's available in each of your, each of your kits. And I'm so excited, hopefully you can, guys can see me, is we have a DNA kit to add to um, your kit this year. So it's build your own DNA and you can see the um, instructions over here. And I ordered one over the holidays and, and built this one. And so I promise you that it's not too hard. Um, to do. It's just little pegs. Um, you can see these little little pegs and it has a it has a mount, it has a base. And you uh -huh. literally just stack these these base pairs are what these are called, but the A, C, T's and G's, you stack those and put a put a, a, a pin, stack another one, put a pin, and then you take this plastic um, stuff and you can connect them 
all in the double helix. So this is kind of fun, maybe a little, maybe a little nerdy and geeky, but, but a little fun activity that you can have available or um, at your table or at your event um, for people to actually get their hands on some DN, to a DNA model. Um, I mentioned the CDC Learn the Science Act early, and um, I showed you the geneticists and the infographics and the rare disease. I did want to mention for those of you who are inviting people to your pop-up that the CDC Learn the Science Act early has a, an ambassador for that program in every single state in, in the country, but you know all of the eight states in our region have a CDC Learn the signs ambassador. So if you are wanting to reach out to some some other early intervention people or people that might be working with working with families, um, I can get you the name of that person. And if you'd like to include them on in your pop up, if they're you know close by um, geographically or what, what would want them to attend, um, they do have people in each state of our region. So I just wanted to mention that. All right, so a few days before your pop-up, which Kathy's is coming up here on Saturday. So um, uh, these are some things that we thought of would, would be good to do a couple days before your pop-up. You might wanna confirm the location or check in like Maria's doing already with the people that are organizing it because she's going to an event. So you might wanna just check in and confirm, confirm those details. If you have invited some people, you might wanna send them a reminder through an email or a social media post. Um, it's just to say, hey, looking forward to seeing you on, you know, next Saturday or, or whenever. Um, and then you might want to repack your gene in a box because undoubtedly you've gotten it and maybe, maybe sifted through all of it and maybe, maybe it's gotten scattered. So put it all back in the box so it's ready to, ready to go with you. And then we'll, um, uh, you can review your getting started sheet and we'll talk about that in just a second. And then really get ready to have fun sharing your expertise about genetics. And, and I really do mean that, you know, as, as families, as genetic ambassadors, as people who have um, navigated um, the, this um, road, um, whether, whether it's um, with your child or yourself or another loved one, we really, we really do have expertise in, in um, navigating genetics. And that's really what hopefully you'll be able to share um, with the families that you're, that you're meeting. So this is the getting started sheet that um, I wanted to mention. There's one of these in every box um, and it's really something to help you um, get prepared for your pop-up and it's something that I would highly recommend reading before you get to the pop-up. Um, so it's, um, it's really just a, uh, a kind of a guide to what you can say, what you can do, and, and, and not, to say, not to sound legalistic saying this is what you have to say and what you have to do, but it's really more for people who might be a little apprehensive. Maybe you don't like to talk in front of people. Um, so I've just given you some pointers of things you could say to kick it off. This really came out of conversations last spring when, when a lot of our um, genetic ambassadors were asking me, what if, what if no one says anything? What if all these people come in the room and no one wants to talk and no one wants to say anything? Um, and so I came up with this as like some question starters. It's two pages. And um, on the second page, there's some questions you can throw out to the group to get the conversation started. And I'm here to assure you, and I hopefully some of our veterans on here can say, tell this as well, that I did not hear of one case where no one talked <laughs> last, last time. It was quite the opposite. And I was hearing reports back that we could, we, people didn't want to leave. They wanted to keep talking. And, and um, yeah. one of the pop-ups um, <laughs> went, went, I think, three or four hours because people really just connected so much um, and really felt like they weren't alone um, in their journey. So that's um, hopefully, uh, uh, Consolate or hopefully confirming for those people who are a little bit hesitant about about that. But this is in the box, and I would highly recommend again pulling that out before your pop up begins. So then that brings us to the pop up. Whenever the pop up arrives, um, you want to have fun. Welcome everyone. Um, meet us where we are at. This is one things we we hear over and over with families. Um, everybody is at a different place in their journey, um, and life is a journey, not a destination, and a marathon, and not a sprint. So we really want to be cognizant of that. You might have people coming to your pop-up that have just gotten a diagnosis um, or are undiagnosed. And you might have people who have, have known um, what their child or individual's diagnosis is from day one, and, and now they're in, their, they're in adulthood. So everybody's going to be at a different place, but everybody brings something to the table. So we just want to make sure that we're welcoming and inclusive of everyone um, and not legalistic of, hey, you have to do this or you have to do this test or you have to do that. That's not, that's not what the pop-ups are about. It's really just a place providing the safe place for people to talk about genetics. 
So I wanted to talk to you about the sign-in cards, which will also be in your box. Um, we've changed this this year because we had sign-in sheets last year and they were a little bit confusing. So we've made these cards. Um, they're about a business size card. I have it blown up here. And um, we're working on the box on the, oops, we're working on the box on the right because um, there's a lot of things to stuff in there. So the font size had to go down low. So we're working on trying to get that blown up a little bit. But the things that are circled in red are really the, the two things that Mountain States needs to be able to um, share this, share with our funders. Um, people who we served. So we really don't need everybody's name, email, and phone number. We would love to have it if they're willing to provide it. But um, really, we are, are required to report back to HRSA a zip code and um, an I am um, designation, meaning I am a parent and family, or I'm a family leader, I'm an MD, I'm a genetics provider. Anyway, there's all these different options on the right-hand side. So those are the two kind of required ones. This one here, the pop-up state and date, is really just for us to kind of um, be able to keep, keep the data together, I guess. So this is something that you as a genetic ambassador can fill out. You, don't, you can fill out that beforehand or you could fill it out afterhand, afterwards. Um, you could just put your state initials, AZ for Arizona, WY for Wyoming, and then the, and then the date. Um, so um, that's really just so we can keep, keep them together whenever they get back to the office. And this also doubles as a raffle card um, if for those of you who are going to be doing um, your gift cards by raffle um, for larger events, um, you can have people drop this in a bowl, a hat, a container, whatever. And this could be what you pull out for the raffle and to give the gift cards. Um, there will be a Ziploc baggie in the box. So even worst case scenario, you can just have everybody put it in the baggie. Um, but that's just to help you kind of keep all these cards together and until you mail them back to us. So. Um, Again, the name, email, and phone number are optional, but the zip code and the I am circling, circling what designation um, they are is really helpful for us. Um, so these, 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 I've, these I've said already, but really the goal is to provide a safe, non-judgmental space for genetic resources and questions to be shared and, and answered. We're really here to encourage conversation and questions um, for individuals. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about social media because I, and many of you know, I can't, I can't not talk about social media <laughs> um, um, since that's the other hat I wear for Mountain States. But we have a challenge going on to see if on our Mountain States Facebook page, we can reach 900 likes by February 29th, which is Rare Disease Day. And we're close. I think we're, I think we're maybe, sorry, the last second I checked, 50 or 75 away from that, from that goal. But um, I've created some hashtags here. The Rare Disease Day hashtag is one that's being used by, um, by the Rare Disease Day um, event organizers worldwide. So that's one you can use if you, if you post anything to, to Facebook. Um, I've made this genetics pop up 2020 and then you can always use MSRGN or tag Mountain States Regional Genetics Network. But I think this is a great way to reach this goal by all the people that we're gonna be interacting with, all the people that you're gonna be interacting with at your pop-ups is to ask them to like, like the Mountain States Genetics, Regional Genetics Facebook page. Um, and we can post pictures then there as well. All right, so let me see. So, um, we're all so asking you if you would please take photos or videos at your event. Um, we would love to share those with um, with our region and with with others um, through social media. We have a photo um, release statement just just um, that you can put on the table wherever they're signing in for their for their cards, um, where the attendance cards that just says that you know we are we may be photographing or videoing this event. If you do not wish to be in a photo, please let the hostess know host or hostess know. So we do have a, a, a printed out statement that you can put, put there um, just to let people know that we are taking um, photographs and um, videos. But if you would share those with us, we would, we would love that. And then one last piece of advice for the actual pop-up is please do not give any medical advice. Um, this, this should probably go without saying, but I, I think it's always good to re remember that we are not medical professionals. And though, though we're really experienced in genetics from our own, our own journeys, um, we need to be cautious of not, not giving another family or not giving another um, professional med medical advice. So what we recommend is always to refer any attendees who have medical questions to their doctor or geneticist. And I wanted to highlight here that on our Mountain States website, we have a find a clinic map. 
So if you're not sure exactly where the closest geneticist would be to the person, because maybe they're from a different different area of the state than you, or maybe they're maybe they've just moved here and, and you're not familiar with the area that they're in, um, there's a there's a map on our website where you can put in the zip code and you can it will show it will show you the the closest geneticist to them. So that is a resource that you can always direct people to and encourage them to ask questions, specifically genetic questions about their child's health or about their loved one's health um, to to uh, to a geneticist. All right, so then that brings us to after the pop-up and we're asking within the week after the pop-up that you do a couple things. And um, that is so we can pay you um, because you may have incurred some expense for food. Um, and so this is our reimbursement form. And there will be one of these in each box as a paper copy. We also have this electronically. So if you prefer to type it in and then print it out typed in, you can do that. But we do require a hard copy um, of, of this signed, physically signed, um, to be mailed back in. We can't take an electronic version. And then we also need original receipts um, and original itemized receipts. So I wanted to talk just a quick bit about what an itemized receipt is because sometimes that might be new terminology for people if you haven't done, have you, if you haven't done one of these expense reports before. So sometimes a restaurant will give you a bill that it has the line for the tip on it um, and it's usually just the total plus the tip. That is a non-itemized receipt. So what, what we are in need of, we can take the one with the tip, but we also need the other one that comes out usually first before you put your credit card down or your payment down that um, says um, exactly what was ordered. So it might say, you know, three pastries and two coffees and it, it's a line item itemized receipt it says item by item what was ordered and the reason we need that is because of um, federal guidelines um, we are not allowed to reimburse for alcohol um, and so we are we have to be able to prove that to an auditor that no alcohol was purchased on that receipt so that's just something to keep in mind when you're and when you're at the restaurant and 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 you know paying is to ask for that itemized receipt if it's not already provided for you and then um to also include to also keep a copy of the one where it where you put the put the tip if if it's a if it's a place where it has a tip available um so the red yellow or sorry the red circles on this form are what need filled out they need your name and organization mailing address and things to where to mail the check to at the top um the meals you can put the the food and drink in that category then you'll need to total it there on the lower right and then there's a signature box and date um, on the bottom so um, I do highly recommend, um, because we do need the original sent to us, that you take some type of copy or photograph of the form and the receipts in case something gets lost in the mail. We've had that happen one time um, where, where it never reached THI and so um, Texas Health Institute. So we want to make sure that you have some type of proof that, you know, that you did send it. Um, the, there will be a self-addressed stamped envelope in the box, and so you should be able to just fold this up with your receipts, include that, and then put the, the sign-in cards in the box and send it back. So just as a recap, the things that have to come back to us are the attendance cards, the signed reimbursement sheet, and the receipts. And everything else in the box is yours to keep. So um, you can, um, uh, there'll be um, one other thing in there I forgot to show you is your, we have a stuffed DNA, which was a big hit. I think this was the biggest hit that everybody reported <laughs> from the last year's um, genetic pop-up. So we have a stuffed DNA and that is yours to keep as well. Um, some people raffled this off as a door prize as well. Some people uh, used it as a photo prop. It makes a great photo prop, um, but we have that in there as well. So everything in the box um, besides the attendance cards, the reimbursement sheet, receipt, receipt and the receipts and the, and the self-addressed stamped envelope to put those in the envelope, everything else in there is yours to keep or to give out to your um, attendees. Um, you, can, you can feel free to, you know, if somebody wants to take the curriculum and pass it along to their school and you don't, have, you don't want to keep it, then go ahead and, and let them take that. Um, and if people need more copies of things, again, you can, you can refer them to that that's, uh, place on our website. All right, that is the end of my presentation of all the, all the details. And we have about 10 minutes left for questions. So um, I'm gonna stop sharing here for a second. 
um, and ask if anybody has any questions. And I also realized that Jesus didn't introduce himself. So let's let him introduce himself and see if anybody else joined that didn't get to introduce um, themselves earlier as well. So he hung out, Christy, because it was a lot of background noise. Oh. He was in the bus. He was oh, in the bus. Okay. Right. Okay. So I asked him to hang out because it, it, he said it was. It, it was, was too loud. Yeah, okay, sorry. Loud. <laughs> sorry. To be to here soon. Anybody, no, else, anybody else that joined, though, that um, didn't get to introduce themselves at the beginning that would like to now? Nope. All right. Any questions? Any questions that I didn't answer that anybody would like to ask? Or any apprehensions? Or how do you do this? Or I'm wondering about that. Any of those types of things, feel free to... Feel free um, to ask as well. Christy, in the beginning, yeah. I know in those uh, forms, I put uh, less number of people, but by talking with the uh, persons who run in the groups, it looks like it's going to be more. So I may probably going to need uh, more uh, material. Okay. Like, uh, the, I was looking over here that I have some from, that I got a while ago, magnets. I will send you the number, but I'm looking about around 25 people for each just to be safe. Okay, 25 for each? Okay. Yeah, one is 25 for, uh, uh, I would say probably 30 and 25. For 30 and 25? For okay, yeah. okay. And that can include probably at least five English in each one, just in case, because I'm pretty sure there will be somebody, the coordinators, I know they want to have some information in English from the development of pathways, because they told me about that okay so. i'll check with annette because i know she was going to start uh, packing up your box today so i'll check and see if she can put 30 30 and one and yeah. i'll just and say I, maybe and i have few in here i was counting it right now i have like a probably at least 15 or 20 in spanish okay but i don't know should i just put that in the side get new material and just in case because that's what i asked for to have yeah. it in let's, case. let's do that so. let's Let's go ahead and do 30 in each if we have it. And then mm -hmm. you just keep those as backup and take them with you yeah. as backup. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Anybody else have any, any thoughts, questions, any of our um, uh, seasoned uh, pop-uppers <laughs> from last, uh, last time wanted to share any words of words of wisdom, Jamie, Maria, Kathy, you guys have all done, done this a time or two before, or ti a time before. <laughs> Does anybody have any, any advice or wisdom for anybody doing this for the first time? Um, I shared this before, but uh, just with the first one that I did last year, um, like uh, you mentioned before, the time was enough. It was hard to, I have only, I uh, think about eight people. And it was yes, it was yes, hard to um, <laughs> stop talking because we ended talking, you know, stand up the session. So I think with this one is even group of videos is giving me an hour and fifteen minutes. Uh, I think it's gonna be a little bit more. I'm gonna be tired a little bit with the other one for development of pathways because they have another speaking, another speaker. Um, I wanna say I can remember now. Uh, probably she's gonna do first her topic, and I can remember that topic, and then it's gonna be me. Uh, so we see that will be kind of interesting because I done it, yes, myself with Jesus, but not with, uh, sharing the time with somebody else, but this one is three hours, which I was surprised. So yeah, it will so be an experience. So, your, so your advice for everybody is, is allocate more time rather than less time. <laughs> yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about I you? I think Dave? Um, for me. Go ahead. This is Kathy. Um, what we did was we have Dr. Uh, Phil James, our geneticist, uh, coming to the event, and we're giving him some time, not very much, to uh, talk about um, the importance of uh, genetic testing and the other tests that families are asked to have their children um, take. Um, and then having him just talk a little bit about, you know, what happens if you you know, how that helps to inform your, the child's care. But what we did is we called Dr. James up yesterday and just asked him, you know, told him about the event, kind of described it to him so he'd know who was going to be there. And he come to find out he treats a lot of the families that will be at the event or who can. And so it, he's already aware of what the event's going to be like, but just having that discussion ahead of time about what to present and how to introduce them and what we're really trying to accomplish is very helpful. 
so I feel a lot better about what Dr. Phil's going to say or Dr. His name's Phil James. I go between Dr. Phil and Dr. James. I'll down some things, but yeah. Um, so that's a suggestion I have. If you're having anybody help present, like a geneticist or a genetic counselor. Yeah, and I think I think you're one of the only ones doing that, Kathy, because I had talked with a bunch of other of, of our genetic ambassadors who thought that they had to have a, a a geneticist or a doctor come speak at the event, and and really when we designed this. Um, we didn't, that wasn't in our, in our original vision is really to have the genetic ambassador or the family member be the expert um, in, in helping others navigate the system um, and, and finding, um, answering questions and things like that. But um, uh, so I, I didn't want to put any pressure on anybody else on the phone that feel like you have to have a geneticist at your event. Um, but that's great. I think that's awesome that you were able to get, get him to come to the event, um, Kathy. So thanks for, thanks for sharing that. That, that I, you have you have good connections, <laughs> but I didn't want any other anybody else on the phone to feel like you don't have to feel like you have to have have to have um have recruited somebody to um because the, the idea is not to make this a lecture and I'm glad Kathy you said that you're kind of keeping it short because it's not not really meant to be a scientific genetics pre presentation to the families it's really meant to be a, co a community conversation a conversation that's happening in your community. Um, about genetics so, in resource sharing. Right. And, you know, we, well, we're, normally we wouldn't have a geneticist there, except with this community or our Latino learning community. We just thought it would be um, great for a lot of them to kind of hear why they should follow up with their tests that are asked of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think that since he sees a lot of the families, that hopefully they'll just build more trust with him so, yeah, and uh, you know yeah no i think that's great that he's able to able to come and i and and i wanted to share if it's okay with you kathy that um you guys are having an interpreter um come for that event because it is um a, sign, a signing interpreter right sign language interpreter right um, and and well, we have simultaneous interpreting both english i mean both spanish and sign spanish so, and sign uh, and so, um, yes, at Kathy the same reached, time. So Kathy had reached out to me um, yesterday and asked if they could use some of their pop-up funds of the three hundred dollars to go towards um, the cost of the interpreter, and I was able to get an okay for that. So, um, so we we've suggested food and drink, but it doesn't necessarily have to be food and drink. So I will just throw that out there if you're if you're having a event where food and drink really isn't applicable, but you you need um, the funds for something else, please just contact me and I can. I can make sure that's uh, appropriate use um, and, and get an approval for that as well. So I'm glad, I'm glad you reached out about that, Kathy. Thank you. I'm glad you approved it. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't me. I just went, I always went to the management team and checked and they said, that's it. They said, no problem. But again, that, that'll need a detailed receipt, just like everything else, which you said should be no problem to provide. So thank you. All right, well, we are at the top of the hour. I will stick on here for a few more minutes. If anybody just has any individual questions you wanna ask me as others others pop off and, and get to their other meetings and things and back to their day. Um, I am always available by email or um, uh, phone. I'm gonna put my, put my last slide up there with all my contact information. So if you need anything um, between um, now and your pop-up or just uh, have questions or just wanna talk through with somebody about what you're thinking, I am totally here and available. I've also recorded this um, uh, uh, pop-up presentation orientation today and I will be uploading it to um, YouTube and putting it on our pop-up page. So if you feel like, hey, what was that that she said I needed to do after the pop-up and you wanna go back and, and review, um, that will be available for you to, to reference back to as well. So thank you guys. Thank you everyone for joining us and I hope you have wonderful pop-ups. I cannot wait to see pictures um, and videos and all the fun you guys are gonna have um, sharing this with your community. So thank, thank you. you very much from all of us at Mountain thank State. You doing this. Thank okay. You, Christy. We'll be Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'll stick on if anybody has any questions for me. Cool. So, Christy, this yeah. is Jamie. Hey, Jamie. <laughs> I'm sitting here. How are you? I'm sitting here pricing these out. Um, it just, 
um, pops into my brain with the type of event I'm holding. I obviously don't know the number at this point, um, right. but I have to come up with a number before the event so um, I can let the facility know for planning purposes. But um, um, a bag, like using some of the money for, because I was thinking 